I'm an oceanographer, so what we're focusing on is the Red Sea, and we're trying to understand how the physics and the biology of the Red Sea work together to make it uh, you know, a functioning ecosystem. Starting in oceanography, I mean, that started back when I was a kid. We always vacationed on the ocean. I grew up in the middle part of the U.S., away from any ocean, but we always vacationed on the ocean. So that's where my interest in the ocean began. I'd actually worked in the Arabian Sea back in the mid-90s. And ever since that time, I'd had an interest in returning to the region and working in the Red Sea, but never had that opportunity. So when I saw the opportunity here at Kaust, I thought that could be an opportunity to come and work on the Red Sea and do some of the work I'd wanted to do a long time ago. And so uh, by being here, it's sort of fulfilling a, a desire I've had for about 20 years to come back and work on the Red Sea. Well, we're using gliders uh, on the Red Sea. The gliders are, are basically robotic submarines, small. They're about two meters long. Um, they can make measurements of some physical properties. and pro uh, We measure some optical properties that inform us about the biology. We measure oxygen. We can measure some other chemicals with it. And it allows us to have a continuous presence in the ocean, looking at both the the change in the ocean and space and time, and we can leave these out for months at a time. So it would be very difficult to keep a crew on a ship out for months at a time, but we could, a glider could stay out for a long time. We have one operating up in the northern part of the Red Sea off of Duba. We have two here uh, in the region uh, between Kaust and Yambu. We, we have a line that we've been running uh, we actually started it back in 2013, but we've just been running it really continuously since um, just this year. And so we have one glider returning on, on that line. Last night, as of about 6 p.m., that glider completed 1,000 dives. I think it's up to dive 1,004 or 1,005 now. It does a dive about every four hours. Um, and that's quite a benchmark. Um, up until 2011, there had only been about 1,500 profiles of temperature and salinity in the Red Sea. These were all obtained by, by ships, and, and so, you know, the ship, you bring up uh, to a station, you put your instruments down, obtain a profile, pull everything back on board, the ship moves again. The glider is continuously doing profiles as it's undulating through the water from the surface down to about 1,000 meters. It's grabbing a profile on each dive. So that glider alone is now up to 1,005 or 1,006 dives. Uh, the glider off Yambu has about, or I mean off Duba, has about 350 dives. So just from those two efforts alone, we're almost as many profiles in the Red Sea in a, in a few months that they'd had in maybe 100 years of effort prior to that. So it's transformed the amount of information that we have about the Red Sea um, quite dramatically. One of the great things about this, and this is coming from both our gliders, we're seeing things in the Red Sea that people have not seen before. There, because as I mentioned, there's only been sort of a limited number of observations in the Red Sea before. So there have been certain things that people have said, this is the way the Red Sea works. And it's because they took the data that was at hand and they interpreted it and said, okay, this is what's happening. With the gliders, we're already seeing things that are different from the way people interpreted the way the Red Sea works. We're seeing this both here in, in, in the region between Kaust and Yambu. We're seeing it up in the north. And so processes that are happening in both these regions are a bit of a surprise to us. Uh, and they break some of the dogmas on how the Red Sea works, but that's part of the excitement, and which we thought would we thought it would happen, but you know we actually do see it happening. And so, by being able to keep this glider out there for that kind of a period, we can actually see these processes happening, and and find out how persistent they are, and how important they are to the system. So it's uh, to us, it's it's transforming they will transform our understanding of the Red Sea.